I want to just go a little bit deeper into this phrase that Jesus used, watch and pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. And over the month of January, um, the Lord gave me two prophetic words. One was, it's time to tell the church to go forward. So I brought that message to the believers in Sydney, and uh, it was uh, graciously received uh, in such a way that uh, there was a resonance saying, yeah, we understand this. There's been many, many blockages, potential blockages in the body of Christ that uh, would try and hamstring the body and stop us from moving forward. And so it's a word that we've just got to let it sit in the top of our spirit all through the course of this year, that there will be times where the enemy will attempt to stop you from taking one step in front of the other. And the other phrase that Jesus gave me in January was this phrase, watch and pray. And it came to me in a fresh way as I was reading through my daily Bible reading in January. And it's taken from Matthew uh, 26. And we're just going to read through it together, and then I'll just expound a little bit on it this morning. And uh, he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to his disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to him, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. So, interesting, this um, passage um, <clears throat> came to me in a new light. And, you know, as we read through this, we obviously pick up a couple of things. Number one, we pick up when Jesus himself uses a uh, descriptive word like exceedingly sorrowful, we understand that this was a very, very painful, exceedingly difficult moment for Jesus. And the initial request he has on the ones that have been with him for three and a half years, he's been on the road with them, they've ate many meals together, he's trained them, he's had opportunity for them to be up close and personal to see him in action and then he's put them in action. And so there's a very strong bond. And so he says to them, can you stay with me here and watch with me? So what does the word watch mean? Well, the original word means to stay awake. Amen. Stay awake, to be watchful, to be vigilant, to be alert. And so what Jesus was saying, this is one of my toughest moments. I need you as as I've done much for you, now it's your turn to reciprocate and it's your turn. To, can you just stay awake? Can you be watchful? Can you remain vigilant for one hour as I as I work out with the Father what's going on in this pivotal moment where Jesus was making some rather large decisions about what was in front of him? And uh, And I think... Right now, the body of Christ needs to be so alert and watchful and vigilant more than any other time in history in the days that we currently find ourselves in. So if we look at Jesus' moment, we know he's in Gethsemane. The word Gethsemane, the name Gethsemane means olive press, and it's a place where they, they trot out the olives to get the olive oil. So it was, a, it was a place of squeezing. It was a place of pressure by definition of even the name. And, you know, this scripture tells us it's here in the Old Testament that it pleased the Lord to bruise his son, 
that he was going to be crushed, that fresh oil might flow to all who believe on him in the days to come. It was a place of it was a place of demonic encounter. And we know this because Jesus specifically himself told us. He said in Luke 22, 53, when I was with you daily in the temple, you did not try to seize me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. So he's basically saying to us that there was going to come an hour in which the powers of darkness would be unleashed against the Son of God. In John 14, verse 30, he tells us this about this being a demonic encounter. He says in verse 30, I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming, but he's got nothing in me or on me. So the devil was rallying his forces, but he had nothing on Jesus. And these are the times, these are the days and, and the hours in our lives where watching with Jesus and being vigilant and wide awake to the enemy's devices are so crucial so that the enemy does not get one step ahead of us, but we are walking one step ahead of the enemy as Jesus demonstrated through this darkest hour in his life. And the truth of the matter is, is that watching the spiritual ministry of watching is the place of ruling over the powers of darkness. When we are able to come into a place where we are vigilant, we are alert, we are walking in step, lockstep with the Holy Spirit, that's the place where we have an advantage over the enemy. And we know even if you study the, the great generals of warfare in the past, this was the thing that caused them to be one step ahead of the enemy. They had great intelligence sources. They were always one step ahead of their enemy, and they had a strategy in place to make sure that they weren't on the losing side. And just as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. That learning to watch with Jesus, to be spiritually observant of the times that we're living in and what is actually happening around us, including as, as micro down as what is happening in our homes, and what is happening in our neighborhood with our neighbors and our streets, this is the place where we get the edge because we're watching, spiritually observing. We are seeing through the eyes of God what is going on around us. And this gives us a great advantage. For Jesus, Gethsemane was a time of deep soul distress. He said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. And it's in times of pain and suffering that we understand the need for us to draw near to God and allow him to draw near to us. These are the days especially that we need to learn to watch with Jesus when we get to know him and how he's working at this season and at this time. So we can work with God. You know, Jesus obviously knew what was in front of him. He knew the sufferings. He knew all the Old Testament scriptures, many of them many, many of them predicting that the Messiah would suffer horribly before he would pay the ultimate price of his life. He went through the betrayal of Jesus. At the same time, it was his own people, the very people he came to reach out to and save that rejected him. I mean, this is big stuff. If you can imagine, you've got this subset, a whole subset of friends, and they all turn their back on you at the same time. The emotional distress of that would be huge. How much more a whole nation is rejecting Christ and turning their back on him. So the soul suffering and emotional distress in Jesus' life is huge. He also knows there's a coming physical suffering of scourging and crucifixion before the ultimate suffering of death. So this was a time of Jesus asking his disciples to come and watch with him, to help him. Up until now, it was mostly the request from his disciples for Jesus to help them. Now it's the time for his disciples to step up to the plate and watch with Jesus in, in this time of his personal distress, to support him by staying awake, being vigilant to what was going on around him. And I believe at the same time Jesus is saying, this is a time for the church to step up to the plate. This is our hour. This is our time to step forward prophetically and to step up to the mark 
with Jesus to to watch with him. And that watching is eventually going to be turned into great prayer and great intercession for the hand of God to move in the nation and the nations of the world. So it's our time to be watchful, to be ready, and not to be ignorant of the devil's devices. It was a time of Jesus wrestling with his own humanity. He comes to that place where he knows what's in front of him. He says, Father, if it is possible, let this cup, this, what's the cup? It's the cup of suffering. Let this suffering pass from me. So he's demonstrating the fact that although he's fully divine, fully God, but he's also the son of man. And he was feeling his humanity. And I tell you, as I get older, I'm feeling my humanity. <laughs> I feel it a lot more than I did when I when I was younger. But we all feel our humanity. And my mind goes to the many stories, you know, the Fox's Book of Martyrs that I've read of the great Christians of the past, many of them no-name believers who suffered terribly, even to torturous deaths, and to not deny Christ. And Jesus is he's saying, look, if there's another way, I don't, my flesh doesn't want to go through this. But he came to that pivotal moment where, you know, the final point I want to make about the garden is where, where Jesus says um, that he is going to submit to the will of God. He says, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Amen. And that's the place that God will often bring all of us to in our lives is that place of total submission and total surrender. Somebody once said to me, the problem with God asking us to be a living sacrifice is that we have a choice. And that choice could be that we might crawl off the altar because it's getting a bit too tight. You know, we're a living sacrifice and God wants us to remain in lockstep and in, in, in connection, deep connection with him. So let's look at this watch and pray before we come to some discussion time about this. Jesus unveils the reason here why we often can't or won't watch and pray one hour with him. He said, the problem is the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. And this is the problem for all of us. I've known this for years. And even though I've, I've been a prayer for years and a worshiper for years, um, in my walk with Jesus, my flesh will try and obstruct me every single time I'm telling it, we're going to the secret place. We're going in for a time of waiting on God, where it will manifest all manner of distractions to try and get me from coming to submit into that place of being a spiritual watcher and observer. You know, three times Jesus comes back and finds them asleep. And, and this is where he, you know, he upbraids them. And he's, he says that, you know, that watch and pray. Don't you know that your spirit is ready, hungry, lean, ready to go, but your flesh is weak and it will, it doesn't want to submit to that place of being a spiritual watcher and observer and prayer with Jesus. So watching and praying, this is, this is the ministry. This is what will fill us with the spiritual strength to resist the temptations that will be sent our way by the enemy. And a spirit of slumber will try and rob us of spiritual vigilance and vitality. And that's the truth. We know our God is a God that neither slumbers nor sleeps, and he wants his children to be exactly the same, neither slumber nor sleep. So what happens when we come into that place where we get still enough with Jesus? This is what happens. He begins to reveal things to our spiritual man, the inner man, things that he gives us a desire to convert what we are observing in the spirit into prayer and into intercession. And this is the process. This is really the first shift that we talked about the last two years, shifting from being distant with God to being intimate with him. It's the place where we begin to become aware of the things that God wants us to be aware about. And as a result of that, in the spirit, we start seeing that dimension of God changing the reality of things. And I, I've seen this many times in, in this place of being deeply connected and watching with Jesus, 
I've seen family members get saved as a result of this, directly saved as a result of a deep inner connection of watching with Jesus and that being turned into intercession. That's literally within a 24-hour period brought about the salvation of family members. So the spirit is willing. Right now, your spirit is saying yes and amen to the prayer closet. Right now, your spirit is saying yes and amen to the presence of God. Right now, your spirit is saying yes and amen to the word of God. It's saying yes and amen to the will of God. But your flesh is saying the opposite. And if you and I fail to enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts and to enter his courts with praise, we will be vulnerable to temptation in a larger measure than we would be otherwise if we weren't connecting and watching with Jesus. So your key and my key to go forward this year is being willing to watch and pray, become a watcher. James put it like this, the Apostle James, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So he's saying that, that there, there is an invitation. God is wanting to draw near to you, but he's saying, I want you to take the first step. You know, and that's the way it should be. You know, he's given us so much. He's delivered us from so much. Can't we take the first step? Can't we be willing to get up in the morning and say, Lord, I'm going to take my first step and draw near to you because I know you've promised as soon as I do that. You, it was like last night, as soon as we began to worship Jesus and watch and pray, suddenly his presence was there instantly and immediately. And people were beginning to see things and hear things as they were taken into the place of spiritual observation, being a watcher in the spirit. And in the process, there's a cleansing, there's a purifying, there's a there's a, a disestablishing of being double-minded within our lives. And we become, you know, if your eye is single, your body, your whole body will be filled with light, Jesus said. There comes a laser focus in our hearts as we declare that we want to follow the will of God. So I've got some discussion questions for us. You maybe those that um I think Richard and and Phil, if you can just take a photo of those questions so that you can um, use them in your breakout room. So here's some discussion questions. Number one, in what ways do you identify with Jesus' disciples in this story? And I'm sure you have. I've actually fallen asleep many times waiting on God because my flesh is weak, you know, and I've woken up and, oh, my goodness, I was supposed to be praying, not sleeping. But what ways do you identify with Jesus' disciples in the story? Number two, Gethsemane is the olive press. It's a place of testing and squeezing. What do you do when you find yourself under pressure to not succumb to that pressure? What are some of the strategies that you've deployed in your life? I'm not talking about the theories. I'm saying, what do you actually do? Share that with the group. Number three, share what watching with Jesus means to you. Share any watching experiences that you may have had. And finally, watch and pray. Take some time to pray with each other this morning and to wait on God to bless one another in prayer.